Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and another random destruction and it's not me today it's actually my wife in the Conqueror. Um, she's not played for a while but this is while I was having that bit of a slump in the Conqueror I mentioned yesterday uh, so this is from a couple of days ago and she jumped in it and was just trying to help me get the damage standing back up and had quite a good game in it actually but the uh, it just wasn't quite enough to get the damage standing back over the 65%. Um, but I have since done that, as I said in yesterday's video. So, it's a tier 9 matchup, it's south coast, and it's a standard battle. And, seeing as the Conqueror was in yesterday's video, uh, I'll just do a quick roundup of it. It's got a good 120mm gun, a fully upgraded, with 259 pen, 400 damage. Uh, it's got a fairly weak hull, although the upper plate can bounce quite a few shots if you accentuate the angle using... Um, a shallow ridge line because it's only got minus seven degrees of gun depression. Uh, but if you use a uh, sort of a shallow slope, hide your lower plate and accentuate the angle on the upper plate, you can bounce quite a few shots off it. And it does have a really good turret front as well that's quite bouncy. Uh, and the gun handling is actually quite good. You know, it's got good aim time. It's got uh, good accuracy as well. It's a uh, it's a very good support tank. Not so much a frontline heavy, although, if you're careful, you can take it up against some of the lower tiers uh, and really go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But this is the first time, uh, yeah, first time she's played in a while, actually. Right. Oh, there's a Centennial coming this way. Good turret from the front, not so much from the side. That was a good solid hit on the side of that turret. And this is what I mean about the shallow slope. You sort of peek over, it accentuates the angle on your turret and on your upper plate as well. Alright, that's the Centennial dealt with. Now, let's go and see if we can deal with that tier 9. Oh, it's a WZ120. I couldn't actually recognise what it was there. The, uh, when I'm doing the commentary, the resolution's not great. It's quite a small screen. And you don't see many WZ120s, actually. So, that's why I didn't recognise it at first. But it's quite a good tier 9 medium. It's the Chinese one. And it's quite a strong brawler, uh, from what I hear. I might be wrong on that, but yeah, from what I hear, it's quite a good... Uh, little brawler with quite decent damage, I think. Although, I could be getting confused with the 121, which is the tier 10. Another Centennial up on the ridge, and that was unfortunate. He just turned, and it bounced off his side. So she's going to move in on this WZ120, put a good hit through the upper plate, straight round behind him, turn the turret to follow. Get reloading time to finish off? Yes. And uh, that's the second kill. Unfortunately, the WZ120 finished off the hammer. Put a good hit in on the Centennial. Oh, if you've not seen some of the videos featuring my wife before, she's a bugger for using the auto-aim. But it works for her, she can pull off some shots that it just doesn't do it for me. I tried do doing it and just failed miserably, but for some reason, it just auto-aim loves her. Right, so that Centennial's dropped down off the ridge line. And she's keeping an eye on the map. Made sure the left flank was clear. Although something's just popped up to the south there. There's a Comet speeding along and he's having a tussle with that T-71. Can we load in time to save him? Yes, nicely done. That's the third kill. And the T-71 saved. That could have been very nasty for him. Although I don't actually know how the T-71's armour holds up now, because they changed it since I played it. Uh, I played it when it first came onto the PS4, where it got the, uh, the sort of flat sloped, if that makes sense, um, upper plate, whereas now it's got a pike nose on it. Uh, and the side armour was just very, very flat. And it's got more of an angle to it now, and... Uh, yeah, I don't know if it helps at all, because its armour's quite thin, but when I played it, if you got hit in the side, your engine was damaged. If not knocked out, which is a very bad thing in a light tank. Put a good hit through the side of that Tiger 2. I thought that might have actually uh, ricocheted off the side there, but no, it went straight through. And now his side on, 
and one more just finishes him off. Right, so scores are looking very favourable. It's 11 5. Two tank destroyers, a heavy and a light tank left on the enemy team. And there's a light tank, another T 71. Oh, that was a good solid hit on the Egg Panther 2. And there's that turret armor, although that one penetrated through the side. But the Egg Panther was only on a small amount of health, and that was enough to finish him off. And there's a bounce off the upper plate, moved back. Now, was that T28 that bounced, or was that. No, I wonder if that was T71. I'm not entirely sure what bounced then. But with 259 pen, the front of a T28 is tough, but it's not. 259 tough I'm afraid so no problem penetrating that and again took another bounce and I'm pretty sure that one was from the T28 but it's always going to bounce off that front plate at that angle but that was a, a very good game and that well that broke the Conqueror's slump so it was just me that was <laughs> misbehaving with the Conqueror uh, but not a bad match at all coming more with a high caliber second class mastery top gun 4,726 damage done and uh, a nice round 1,200 blocked as well uh, and a sniper medal which is uh, well I've got a lot of those in the Conqueror actually because like I say it's a very accurate gun uh, 1,500 base XP so not a bad game at all not quite enough to put my damage standing back over 65% but it put it up quite a bit actually I think it was just under and then uh, I left it for a couple of days and obviously did that match yesterday which pus pushed me just back over again. So on to the second replay of tonight, Ghost Town, Standard Battle, I'm um, in the IS-3 and I'm pretty sure it's a tier 8 matchup actually. Uh, quick rundown before it starts, uh, 225 penetration on the BL9 gun, 390 damage, 4.5 rounds a minute. Um, Fairly standard Russian accuracy and in an awful aiming time at 3.4 seconds and the accuracy at 0.4. Quite, it feels, well it's quite a mobile uh, tank this. 38 kilometers now with a 700 horsepower engine and you can see it's not, you know, particularly slow. There are, there are slower tier 8s definitely. Um, 30 degree traverse on the hull, 26 on the turret. Um, not the best view range at 350. 110 mil of armour on the front, which doesn't sound a lot, but it's got that pike nose, so it can bounce a lot of shots. They are quite a tough tank from the front. 90 on the sides, which is very good, and it's got a strip of spaced armour down each side as well, just above the tracks, which can eat shots. Um, yeah, in fact, we'll see an example of that later. Um, and 60 mil on the rear, the turret, fantastic from the front, 249 and very rounded. And in fact, the sides at 172 and quite sloped uh, is quite good as well, with 100 on the rear. Now, I've not put this one on because it's particularly exciting, because I'll be the first to admit it's not a particularly exciting match. Um, it's not a particularly stunning match for damage either. But I've put it on because it is a fairly good example of side scraping. And, for, you know, when I get my act together, I do start off a little bit sloppy, expose a bit the front of my tank, and uh, angle it a bit too much. But then again, I was going for the Tiger 2 on one side of the road, and then stuff popped up on the other side of the road. So, I basically sort it out and uh, start bouncing again. But for those of you that don't know what side scraping is, it's this. You basically drive up to the corner of a building, uh, say there's enemy tanks down the street, like there are here, and uh, you reverse out at a slight angle so it keeps the front of your tank hidden and you reverse out slowly until you can just see the enemy and shoot them and fingers crossed if you've got if it's the right angle and it does take some practice I still get it wrong occasionally um, all they'll do is knock your tracks off or bounce off your side armor because you're keeping the front of your tank hidden and the side of your tank is at such an angle that it's either an auto bounce if you've got it 70 degrees or more or if your armor's thick enough, like 90 degrees, it really does accentuate it and thicken that armor up and make the effective thickness uh, absolutely fantastic. I don't know the exact figures, but yeah, as you can see, all they're doing is knocking my tracks off or ricocheting. And basically, this is this is where I stay for most of the match, just side scraping off this building. Um, 
holding this corner and everything just seems to want to shoot back at me instead of trying to flank around. You know, my the entire flank to the right of me, to the north, is uh, pretty much open. But, I think there's a lot of people that know how to side scrape and obviously know what it is. There's a lot of people who don't know what it is and don't quite know how to do it. See there, I'd expose the front of my tank a bit too much. But you don't tend to see much of it. And I don't do it. I mean, I know how to do it, and I don't do it as much as I should do. Oh, and do you see there? That's the weakness on the top of the IS-3's turret. Uh, did you see where I was aiming? Just above the gun. And there's a weak spot there that's only 20 mil, and you can penetrate it with anything 60 millimeter or above uh, gun caliber. Uh, but yeah, back to the side scraping. I think the reason you don't see a lot of it is, from my own experience, some people just don't know what it is. And in random battles, when you're surrounded by random people, they tend to just get in your way and make it very, very difficult. So there I decided to leave the IS-3 because I could see some other tanks coming around on my left. And I went for the Centennial that was flanking around on the right uh, to the north. But yeah... Um, from my own experience, I'll set up for side scraping and somebody will just come behind me and block me. Or and just sit there poking out sideways and just keep me blocked so I can't actually move back to shoot. Uh, other times I'll move back to shoot and somebody will do the opposite. They'll go in front of me and stick out sideways so I can't move back in and they're just in my way and I'm just getting sat there. Uh, other times they'll just moan at you because they've got no clue what you're actually doing. Um, the other day I was in the T-34-2. Uh, tier 8 Chinese medium, which can side scrape. You've got to be careful with it because the side armor is not brilliant, but against some sort of equal tier and lower tier mediums and such, you can side scrape. And I was doing quite a good job of side scraping on a map, and there was a T29 behind me over the headset just moaning and moaning that I kept going back and forth into his view. What are you doing? What are you doing? And he just couldn't grasp the concept that I was side scraping and bouncing shots. Um, so, you know, I think that's why I don't do as much of it as I should, but it is a very good tactic. And the best to practice it in, I mean, as you can see there, I blocked 5,000 damage without really doing much, but, you know, not a spectacular game damage-wise. But I just wanted to put it on as a sort of uh, a decent-ish decent, decent -ish example of side scraping and how effective it can actually be. And if you're going to practice it... Um, Probably try and down at the lower tiers if you've not got anybody to go into a training room with. Something like a, a VK3601 which has got, I think, 60mm uh, of side armour. Um, you, if you're top tier you could actually practice side scraping and something like that very well. But the thicker the side armour the better. Churchill's are fantastic for it. And so is the Black Prince. Anyway, uh, here we are for the last replay and we're on Pearl River. And it's a, technically a tier 9 match but there's only one tier 9 per team. And I'm in the tier 8 German uh, heavy tank, one of the, well on the other line not the Tiger 2, the VK 4502A and you'll see that I'm not actually moving at the beginning of the match because I find that Pearl River is one of those maps where more often than not everybody piles one way so I was just waiting to see where people were going now I think I've said in one of the other videos that I featured this and I really wasn't that keen on this tank at first I thought it was quite slow and sluggish and, and quite horrible actually but once you get it fully upgraded uh, get the 105mm gun on it um, get the, the decent engine on it it's not a bad tank although I would say that unlike the Tiger 2 I've, I've not played the Tiger 2 yet but from what I've seen in videos and heard the Tiger 2 is you know sort of more of a traditional heavy um, although I could be wrong, but like I said, I've not played it yet. This plays more of a support role, and more like a medium, to be honest. Like I say, it is, you know, quite a nippy tank. Um, it's got a decent engine, 38 kilometers an hour, 840 horsepower engine. Traverse leaves a bit to be desired at 28 and 25 for the, uh, for the hull and the turret. 390 meter view range, which isn't bad actually. 120 mil of armor on the front, but it's not quite as sloped as the Tiger 2, so you do have to be quite careful. Uh, 80 on the side and rear, 185 on the upgraded turret on the front, and 80 on the side and rear. And uh, like I say, it gets 105 mil gun, 200 mil penetration, 320 alpha damage, uh, 5.9 rounds a minute, 0.37 accuracy, which isn't too bad, but it's not the best and a 2.3 second aiming time, which again is fairly middling I'd say. 
and again it's not particularly a stunning round it was a good round it showed a bit of good teamwork you know we're not getting in each other's way covering each other's back although I would have liked to have taken out that T5 4E1 um, especially before he took out that Carnarvon that was unfortunate I was a bit slow there on reading the map and I'd been keeping an eye on him earlier but I was staying back at first because I just didn't want to get in the way because there were four of us here in a very small space so I stayed back slightly to see what they'd do to see if these guys pushed up and round or if uh, if the enemy tanks actually pushed round that corner which indeed they have and they keep popping back and forth so I was going up there cautiously and the Tiger 2 pops out and I plant a good one into his side and he bounces off my front plate and the T32 bounces off my front plate which was unexpected I really did expect that to penetrate <coughs> excuse me now I've got to keep an eye on the map and it's about this point I noticed that heavy tank and yeah if I hadn't have seen him on the map again that would have alerted me get a good one through his side and somebody finishes him off now again that was my fault I let my map awareness uh, sort of slip slightly there because I should have noticed that IS-3 earlier trying to get a shot on the machine gun port and yeah I did and penetrated but he got a good one through my commander's hatch definitely one of the things you've got to be careful of on the turret of this front of the turret is quite solid and can bounce a few shots but you've got to watch that commander's hatch and poke around and try and put another one through the machine gun port but I just managed to track him instead and I don't want to get in the way of our T32 from backing off try and aim for the lower plate and put a good one through it back off before he can fire again and now I don't want to go forwards and get shot our T32 doesn't either and so I start bobbing back and forth trying to get him to fire and in the end I think our T32 goes for it he gets tracked so he doesn't take any damage can I finish him off with a shot through the low plate I can just enough in fact that hit him for 312 and this was 320 average so that could have left him alive oh and there's another one and this one's full health again and we're looking a bit worse for wear after fighting off this corner so I'm going to use the carcass of this Tiger 2 as a bit of solid cover in between me and them and hopefully these guys will do the same as the mates just did and start popping around that corner and letting us put shots into them although yeah I don't think they're going to yeah they've been a bit more cautious and I've got no equipment on this yet I've just remembered I've yet to put any on it so I'm going to pop around the corner and see if I can get a sneaky shot in put one through the light tank that T49 I'm going to take one in return although yeah he looks pretty much stock he's got the uh, the 90 mil same one that's on the Brazilian Bulldog put a nice one through the side of the uh, IS-3 but I get tracked in return and I don't really want to burn my repair kit but my tracks get back up in time luckily save my repair kit just in case my ammo rack gets done now I've managed to put them through the front of the T-32's turret but I take a big hit from the IS-3 but that seems to tell me that T-32 is possibly if he's not stock he's got the first turret because I don't think I'll be able to put one through the front of the uh, upgraded one I'll take another hit ooh that was a close one and I'm on 95 health so I'm going to back off Ferdinand moves up although that's when I realise he's on very low health himself although it is a very tough tank from the front so what I'm going to try and do hopefully I'm fast enough like I say it's, it's not sluggish this and hopefully I'm fast enough to get round um, use those paths in the middle and fingers crossed they'll be able to hold them off while I go around and flank and then we've got them in basically in a crossfire and no matter which way they uh, try and angle one of us is going to be able to get through their armour I've just got to hope that our T32 and the Ferdinand can hold them off until I get there because it's a long way coming this way coming from the other direction as you can see you come down where the IS-3 is but coming this way I've got to come all the way around here uh, and then come back on myself to get up along that sort of uh, well I suppose it's a small cliff path thing 
and I'm just keeping an eye on them making sure they're still alive it's, it is a bit of a risk to be honest and I wish I'd have got my headset on at this point um, so I could have said to these guys and hopefully you know uh, they understand English because uh, well I don't speak any other language unfortunately but I wish I could have communicated to them some way that you know I'm going to try and flank them just try and hold them off unfortunately the Ferdinand he takes one and uh, he's a goner T32 is on just under half health or just over a third and this is where I make a bit of a cock up because I'm just trying to get round and help that T32 out and I forget about the T49 and it nearly cost me my tank that was very close but I managed to plant one in the back of the IS-3 and I'm backing up I take another hit from the uh, T49 but I don't think it did anything and now I'm just praying to reload in time oh where did that one go and here's some slow-mo because I'm getting fancy oh it went just high and to the right and got buried into the spaced armour and he was allowed to just put one into me and that's it I'm a goner that was so unfortunate that's RNGesus for you um, put you, no point getting stressed about it, just go and play a different tank and have fun. Anyway, I think we'll skip to the end after that one. But again, not a stunning game, not a bad game. Um, not a bad daily double, 4,500, 3,261 damage done and 1,280 blocked. But again, I just just put it on really, just to show that it, things just go wrong. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. RNG Jesus is just going to... No, not today. Um, but yeah, there you go. Came second. Uh, did quite a bit of damage, but I think the third he probably blocked a lot more and he also took down two extra tanks. But I'm happy with the second in that one. Uh, like I say, it wasn't a stunning round, so second place is quite nice. Anyway, as always, I hope I've entertained you and take care out there and I will catch you next time. See you later.